This is a huge drain on resources. And it leaves the continent dangerously vulnerable to the price shocks should there be a shortage. African countries are working aggressively to alter their continents. Destiny. The Coalition for African Rice Development created in 2008 with Japan's leadership is hoping to double Af Africa's rice production within a decade. In the past, increases in Africa's rice production <coughs> came mostly from land expansion. But now, the focus is on increasing yields on less land, something the Asian countries know very well. To make meaningful change in Africa is a huge challenge, but it's been done before, right here in Vietnam. In a very short period of time, we know Vietnam went from being a large importer of rice to becoming one of the world's largest exporters. They did it by staying focused, making use of the best modern varieties, and judicious policy reforms. Today, it's hard to imagine that Vietnam ever imported rice. This kind of determination and persistence is also evident in its people, especially its scientists. During my time with the Rockefeller Foundation's Rice Biotechnology Program, we made the first grant that the U.S. government allowed to, to be made in Vietnam since the war. We made it to a promising young Vietnamese scientist named Lee Tran Binh. Since then, Ben has become a leader in the agricultural development and transformation here in Vietnam. Over the years, Ben and I have become friends. At various times, we discuss different challenges that we're facing. And I ask him, do you think this is possible? And he always answers with the same optimistic reply. Why not? We have to try. So why not? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. Because Ben's right. There's no reason we can't confront and overcome the challenges ahead. We have the technology, we have the resources, and most importantly, we have Erie to lead the way. So working together in partnership, we can ensure that farmers in Asia, Africa, and elsewhere enjoy productive crops, healthy livelihoods, and productive lives. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. We will just hold the questions. We'll move to the next presentations. We'll have three presentations. Then we'll have a panel discussion for hopefully for 30 minutes here. Our next presenter is Mr. Matthias Mundi from the, from the Bayer Crop Science. Uh, currently, he works as a global market acceptance manager and for the last 10 years has worked it, uh, in various capacity within, within Bayer Crop Science. Uh, he's, uh, he was educated as an agronomist in France. And uh, he will talk about the uh, biotechnology development sustaining the green revolution. With that, uh, Mr. Murthy, the is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. <coughs> this is uh, really, really a pleasure to be with you today and to be able to uh, make this lecture in front of you. I would like to uh, take the time to, to acknowledge and to uh, thank really the organizer for in inviting me. The speech that I'm going to deliver is entitled Biotechnology Development Sustaining the Green Revolution. So, for those of you who are participating to this uh, forum since this morning, a lot of the data that I'm going to show you have already seen. These are macro data, sorry, these are macro data regarding agriculture, where we are standing today, and the ch type of challenges that we are going to face into the future. You've seen all those data, but I think that this is worth really repeating them, repeating them, and repeating them again. Not only in those type of forum, but also outside, in order to make sure that people are understanding the great challenges that agriculture are going to face into the future. And this, in order to try to find out the solutions that will need to be implemented locally. This map, hopefully, is not driven by this map is designed by the FAO and being updated by the FAO, explaining and showing where are the undernourished people in the planet. There are one billion people of undernourished, uh, of, there is one million people undernourished in the world. Most of those people are in Asia. More than 600 million people are undernourished in Asia. The second continent which is uh, dramatically hit by this is Africa with uh, more than 250 million people. 
<coughs> when we are looking at a map like this, I mean, we are looking at statistics. But behind statistics, there are really people. And here, when we are talking about a, a green revolution, the goal is not really to optimize agriculture for the sake of optimizing agriculture. The goal of the green revolution is to be able to make sure that with a growing population, we will still be able to nourish more and more people and to be able to decrease the level of nourished people throughout the world. So you remember that in the 1950s, we were on this planet about 2.5 million. There is, there were about a half an acre in order to be able to nourish each people. By 2000, this number has reached to 6.1 million. And we are expecting that by 2050, we will be 9 billion people on this planet. So there again, the challenge is a simple mathematical equation. More people, less arable land. How is agriculture going to sustain producing enough food to be able to feed all those people? A couple of years ago, Bayer, amongst other people, have uh, made a cry for the call for a second window. <coughs> Here I'm going to display to you a short video, about three minutes, that is explaining you the concept about what we are meaning by second wave evolution. That would be better if I didn't have sound. Can somebody help? This is because she doesn't have to work in the fields all day, but rather has valuable... Chandra Kalar from India. She's 10 years old and has been going to school for two years. She is the first girl in her family to learn how to read. This is because she doesn't have to work in the fields all day, but rather has valuable time for school. It wasn't always like this. When they were her age, Chandra's parents spent their entire childhoods in the fields to provide for their families. In those days, harvests were less reliable and the yields were lower. In the 1960s, India was on the brink of a major famine after several harvests failed. Learning to read and write was inconceivable. Unfortunately, that is still the case in many countries in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. Agronomist Norman Borlaug went to Mexico in the 1950s on behalf of the U.S. government to try and successfully combat hunger. His task was to markedly increase food production by the use of fertilizers, crop protection products, and higher yielding seeds. Norman Borlaug founded the Green Revolution, which in the following years also made possible substantial productivity increases in India and other countries in Asia. He received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970 in recognition of this achievement. The jury in Oslo said, they have made this choice in the hope that providing bread will also give the world peace. In an interview given shortly before his death in September 2009, Norman Borlaug said, When I was born 95 years ago, there were 1.6 billion people on this planet. There are likely to be 9.1 billion people on our planet by 2050. In the next 40 years, Humanity will have to produce more food than in the past 10,000 years together. This will be accompanied by further increases in the global demand for food and animal feed. However, the land available for growing crops around the world is limited. And global climate change will present agriculture with further challenges. Dr. Michael Metzloff, a molecular biologist at Bayer Crop Science, is one of the leading research scientists working on the development of crops capable of coping better with climate stress. We need a second green revolution to further increase our crop yields. For that, we need state-of-the-art methods and technologies in plant breeding research, but also in the transfer of plant traits. We at Bayer Crop Science invest some 650 million euro every year in the research and development of innovative crop protection solutions and crops with improved properties. 
We plan to increase our research spending to 750 million euro per year in the medium term. Because we know that the problems of the future can only be resolved with innovation. The challenges we face as Bayer Group Science are fundamental. They affect nothing less than the health and survival of millions of people. However, I am confident that these challenges can be overcome through innovation. Thank you. 